when are Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is uh, July 23rd, 2023. Howard, have you watched the Barbie movie? I haven't. I was going to go. Rachel uh, wants me to wait and have to go see it with her. She's coming this week. Let's hit a, Let's do a run on the beach. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's set it up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in heavy train mode right now for my going riding in Spain in September. And the house is almost ready, so I want to have you over. I'm, 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 we're a week away. The house will be finished this week. Great. Great news, Howard. Are you having fun being back? Yeah, I mean, the weather here is just incredible. It's just incredible. definitely not having the heat. It's just nothing to complain, yeah. No, it's fantastic. The uh, Okay, take it away. Catch me up. All right. So, I mean, last week, the market started really strong the first couple of days. Yeah. And then we saw a major rotation towards the second part of the week as earnings season kind of uh, began um, with Netflix and Tesla. Uh, both of them crushed, crushed estimates, but the, re the actual market expectations have been so high. Well, the rally was Netflix. I mean, this thing tripled, basically. I sold mine sure that I sold mine. I mean, I, I just, I think long-term, Ivan, they're just the winner because this, this strike kills everybody else relatively. Like, there's no content anywhere. Like, I was talking to the A24 guys, and, and other than a few movies, like, no one can break the, uh, no one can break uh, the strike, you know, um, no one can break across the picket line. So you've got writers and actors on strike, uh it's starting to get expensive I've, the a24 guy like they're saying that like at some point biden's gonna have to get involved and get everybody back to the table and what's super interesting um i mean this is good for youtube this is great for tiktok this is great for uh, face meta and this is good for twitter right like there's enough kids are already addicted to this stuff um but what's interesting is you know CNN, Fox, they're all CNN, Fox. Uh, they're all owned by, you know, major studios. So you're not going to get a good shake on the news in favor of the employee, like in favor, you know, so mm -hmm. it's pro Hollywood. Um, the whole thing's just, you know, the systems are kind of, you can't tear it all down or burn it all down, but the systems are just kind of broken. Anyways, Netflix into all that news, no wonder they sold the news, right? But yeah. long term, uh, this benefits Netflix over the other streamers. Um, and then what Tesla they sold off the news, mainly, let's be honest, margins. Like they're taking a hit in margins. Um, but they're it's having a lot of cars, they need to sell them. So they're, they're dropping prices. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's, I can explain it through a lot of e commerce companies. You know, if you're if you're selling some for a hundred dollars, then you extend your 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 line of products and start selling ten dollar things. You got to sell a lot more ten dollar things to to grow your top line. And um, listen, I mean, <clears throat> and then the other story that kind of doesn't ring hollow is yeah, their charging stations will be used by other car companies, but at the same time, that's more competition for Tesla. So again. Like it's been a great run, and so it's, hopefully it's just a breather. As you know, I prefer markets going up, so hopefully it's just a breather. Like we'll, we'll you know, but on the long term chart, Tesla. If you go to the monthly, I mean, it makes sense that it paused here. You know, it's had a great. It's doubled off the lows. Netflix is like a triple. We we go look at Netflix. Yeah, three hundred is a big level, a big technical level. It, it's completely normal to see some profit yeah. taking sell the news uh, ahead of the FOMC uh, this Wednesday and just ahead of earnings season. Uh, completely normal. That I think testing even their 50-day, I mean, they haven't, they haven't even tested their 50-day moving average uh, test when Netflix, uh, which yeah. a lot of big winners, they tend to do a lot. Like I've always said, with the eight to eighty brands like Tesla, Netflix, you know, pay, buying them when they're down sixty percent, you know, their top lines can't 
you know, these are the, you know the eight to eighty brands. You buy them not when they're approaching all time highs. You buy them when they're all right. So you sorry know. if you if you're saying this, are you buying Disney? Then if it's the, down so much, the, the issue with Disney is is different. If you're a kid today with YouTube and TikTok and Snapchat and all these brands online, it doesn't mean the same. Plus, it's expensive for an average family to go to Disneyland. So it is a different world, right? Like we're talking about different generations. This is a generational company that's kind of run into you know, a bit of a wall. These kids, if they don't do rides and, and kids are so used to immersive technology, how exciting are these Disneyland projects? So again, no one complains that they're bad if they go, but it's a very expensive family trip. And Pixar and Disney haven't had, I mean, if kids don't go to the parks, they don't know the characters. And if they don't know the characters, the movies don't ring as true. And writers are on strike. And, you know, Hulu's a great channel, but you're competing against Netflix. And then you've got ESPN, which supposedly is on the block. So no, I don't I don't consider Disney an 880 brand. Uh, I mean, it is, but I don't okay. consider it. Okay. I don't consider one of the top 10, 8 to 80 or top mm -hmm. 20, even 8 to 80 brands. So, no, I, I don't see there's, a, I don't know what the catalyst for Disney to go up other than it's doing bad. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Same with Nike. Like Nike, I've, I haven't owned for a while. And again, it's a tough, it's a great company, but it's in a tough spot, you know? Uh, but I'd rather own Nike than Disney, personally. Mm -hmm. So, again, like these aren't the, you know, the top eight to 80 brands, you have to start digital first because of the margins. And we live in a different era. You know, Nike is a great company and so is Disney, but they can't deliver the margins that uh, the, the eight to 80 companies like Google. So if we look at Google, like I'm going to buy Google all day long ahead of these. Why? I could be wrong, but YouTube, I spent, I spent an hour and a half there today, a rabbit hole on tennis, and cycling and 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 um, golf instruction and you can go to youtube homepage and if you spend an hour on youtube homepage just like spending 10 minutes on tiktok you will get home like some of the greatest entertainment and and history and educational clips i mean that that is so undervalued youtube so no like I'd rather own YouTube than Disneyland, personally. So I'm going to own Google way ahead of buying Disney. And that 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 is just, you can't own every stock. And so if you don't own the index, by the way, I would probably take Disney out of, in an unpicking world, I'd probably take Disney out of my S&P 500. But anyway, keep going. Like, go around the horn yeah. of where, what's working. So, I mean, obviously very early in earnings season, uh, but okay. we had two very... Uh big important earnings reports uh, from the semiconductor sector we had uh, the dutch company asml which is the biggest uh, manufacturer of semiconductor equipment like they make the machines yeah. that the yeah. semiconductor companies use to make the chips yep. I mean, they beat but they also sold off which, which is kind of a reflection of current I think market. applied materials sold off too I mean, all the semis are kind of very highly correlated. They kind they trade. No, but the equipment guy is like AMAT makes the equipment too. Yeah, I AMAT to too. Uh, but also the other one. I mean, they haven't reported yet. So obviously, when ASML sells off, everything else is going to sell off in sympathy. But mm -hmm. the other big one, TSM, which actually they like everyone is white labeling with them. They're making all the chips for Nvidia and AMD and any anyone you can think of. Like they make the chips. They barely beat. They guided down next year. They said that you know the cyclic the AI chips and the demand for them is not enough to um to stop the cyclicality of their business. Mm. Like the, the only thing that is growing right now is the demand for AI chips, which only account for six percent of their overall revenue. They expect that to reach the mid teens. So it's it's very quickly growing segment. Like they said, 50% yeah. a year. That's a lot of large number. That's a half a trillion dollar company. Where, where's the monthly on this? Like, you know. But all the other aspects of their business, they're not really growing as fast. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, and this is, why, this is why we, we saw that 
pullback after earnings. I mean, uh, just another profit taking. Obviously, when a company runs into earnings so much, you're going to see some profit taking on no matter what the company reports. The question well, so is some rip roaring bull market, right? Like we have huge interest rate drag. So it's not like we're in some, it's just a yeah, rotation. five and a quarter and they might raise it even a little bit more or at least keep it here. I, I think it's 98%. I was reading chart that 98% like baked in, like they're raising, like the Bloomberg number is like 98% likelihood that uh, they're raising again. So that's priced in already. Another yeah, point. maybe this is why the US dollar started to turn up a little bit in expectation. So we'll see what, what happens. But so in the second half of the week, as tech stocks pulled back mm -hmm. on the basis of Netflix, Tesla, uh, TSM, ASML earnings, we saw a rotation into defensive sectors like healthcare, consumer staples, utilities, which is kind of funny in a, in a world where the one month treasury yields, you know, 5% to see people going into utilities or or consumer staples that pay like two, three percent, four percent dividend, but mm. we saw that kind of defensive move. Like the money didn't really leave the market; it kind of rotated, and you can see even the volume that's increasing volume mm -hmm. to those stocks that have been underperforming for a while. Go back to the weekly. I don't know what's in consumer staple, like uh, toilet paper. <laughs> toilet no, paper. No, like what's in consumer staple? Soup, uh, energy drinks, uh, kind of, Coke, Pepsi, stuff like this. Give me um, a monthly there. Yeah, they're they're kind of sideways. Yeah, I mean they've been going sideways for a very long time, and but the past week definitely we saw that rotation. We don't know if it's going to continue. In general, these are slower moving names. Mm -hmm. And uh, then energy, energy is like technically interesting. Energy, like yeah, if they can recapture the the same staples. thing as the as the consumer staples that kind of rallied last week. Consumer staples, healthcare definitely rallying. Um, everything started with the UNH uh, earnings mm -hmm. uh, breaking out, but also banks have been rallying too, which we know yeah. this year they haven't done really well. Yeah, I mean Goldman. If you look at Goldman, I wrote about it during the week on StockTwits. Is like that stock was a horrific quarter. In the stock rallied and closed at weekly highs. Yeah, we're seeing so, so they, they people want to yeah. look at Schwab. Like I was on Schwab, Schwab just exploded from a bad yeah, all of them gapped up and and kind of holding and, and gave, even Robin Hood, even Robin Hood. So Robin Hood was running ahead of that. It was more of a crypto play here. No, but you know what I'm saying? Like they're making money. The Robin Hood gold, like people are converting, you know. Mm -hmm. and, with rates at six seven percent to spread, they can make some money um, without customers trading. Again, we'll see if these things hold, but it's pretty healthy that people aren't pulling their money out of growth completely. They're yeah. just rotating. rotation. That's what yeah. you want to see. And the small caps are probably going to lead the lead the rest half of the year. I mean, they typically outperform in July, but we'll see. We'll see. They they probably need some time to set up again. Uh, here the two best countries are argentina and greece so it's like i you know i don't trade foreign stocks but argt like if you look at the weekly it's been a home yeah room. i mean no. latin america definitely showed some um relative strength last week iof which is a, like the biggest 40 uh, stocks as you yeah. can see definitely mercado you know, libre looks great i mean look at that mercado yeah i mean mary has been pulled back to the 200 day and then it, and then it bounced so now it's look at the volume. Like it, it was a good week. And look, if you go to the monthly, I mean, what a great, what a great run. Oh, company. incredible company. Yeah, definitely. That's what I'm saying. So it never re it's back above its 200 day. Um, this is the 50 month. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it tested the 200 day here, as you can see, and immediately was bought on that gap. I don't even know why it gapped down. But in general, like a lot of the Latin American stocks, they kind of look the same. So Brazil is looking similar to IOF, looking similar to Argentina in terms of price action. So it's interesting to see if we'll see, for example, like US travel stocks have been super strong, like airlines, the crushing estimates, they've been going up. It's interesting to see if we see the same thing like in Brazilian or South American airlines, like Azul or, or CPA or Go. If we see something similar there, uh, as people there also, you know, starting to travel, 
but any, anything travel related is still super strong. Uh, Marriott hotel chain uh, mm. breaking out. Airlines have been strong. United Airlines had a good week. I mean, I don't follow these yeah. things. I just Airbnb is starting to perk up, making wow. your. I mean, yeah, it's still a recent IPO. And Uber, obviously, super strong to... Uh... No, I mean, they kick Lyft's ass. They, they're going to be the big benefactor from, from the world going electrification because, you know, the drivers can make more money running electric vehicles. Um, there's Uber for old people, I heard, that's phenomenal. Like, really? seriously, it's it, like, goes slower. It helps people get in the cars. There's so, there's so many ancillary things now that they figured out their actual who they are um what a brand right they destroyed lyft for all intents and purposes and there's just you know it's not that it's small i mean at 100 billion it kind of has again if you survive look how many mistakes twitter can make right like if you survive web 2 the winners from web 2 because interest rates are high if we go through the uber airbnb twitter Facebook, even Snapchat, right? Like if you have a user base and you had to figure out your true self, I'm not saying Snap is ever going to see 80 bucks again, but they're out of the woods. Like they have figured out who their audience is. They will figure out how to, how to be profitable. And you can't compete because you can't scale because rates are not zero. So you are going to see, just like the end of Web 1, the Amazons and the, and the Ebays, the ones that survived had great runs once the bear market ended. And I think you're starting to see the same in the Airbnb Uber. Um, you know, I haven't thought of too many, I, I guess Mercado Libre. Um, so if rates, you know, settle in at like 4 or 5%, and come down over the next year. You, you could see some massive runs in some of these Web two companies. Um, on the IPO front, anything interesting happening? Like, there's only one that, like, Israeli based um, company. Ox. I mean, they said they use AI to to produce their cosmetics and to market them. Three billion market cap. Okay, so the market is kind of excited. I mean, you can compare that to, let's say. Um, Elf, which is like six billion dollar company, or to Ota, even though the Israeli company is like online only, as far as I know, Ota is twenty three billion. So what all these. About, are... What about uh, the IPO ticker? Is anything happening there? Is oh, that... the IPO. Let's see. I mean, it just pulled back with the rest of the tech. They, they're kind of very highly correlated. So yeah, well, let's see the weekly there. But all the all the moving averages are now going up. It needs some time to digest the. the yeah, there's some cooking though. There's some cooking. I think. I think we're in a pretty good spot. I I was reading that like. I, I don't think you can have a bear market anymore when stocks are almost retrace the whole thing. So, yeah. Yeah. bear market's officially, officially, officially over. If we if we plunge from here, it would just be a new bear market. It wouldn't be the same bear market and um exactly yeah yeah so congrats to the people that really got it. i think you and i've been pretty bullish for about six months now uh on this show but um but with rates at six seven percent i'm not like rushing to pay up for anything but there's some good setups i think the ipo it you've had a couple of years now with no ipos there's no spacs there's very little supply in the market yeah yeah so I just think people haven't invested in a 6%, 7% mortgage environment. And then remember, like the financials are doing well, but like student loans are going to be 20 billion or I think that some crazy number coming out of deposits, August 31st, September 1. Yeah. Um, yeah, home builders, but home builders have done amazing, obviously, for various reasons. When you have seven percent, well, the main reason is they await still in their memory and they haven't they haven't leveraged themselves, they're not supplying anything, they're not building, you know, so they're just their balance sheets are they're much better. Less, and um, there's so a lot fewer transactions in real estate because people 
don't want to sell their house and then you know switch to a seven percent mortgage. So people are not willing to sell. So there are very few transactions going on. So people just go and they buy brand new houses because the the home builders offer the best rates right now and the best deals than okay. what you can but get. But start. I'm getting pitched startups. I'm in that are going to do like. They're trying to figure out how to like transfer loans and charge a fee. Like if rates stay up and, and continue to creep higher, which is a possibility, that's what everybody thinks. At some point, you know, too much in this country relies on transactions in that industry. So the banks are going to have to let people transfer mortgages and, and get paid a fee, right? So, you know, if you have a, 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 a 30 year at 3%, and the guy buys your house and qualifies, maybe you transfer it at three rather than renewing it and pay enough point to mm -hmm. the bank. So I'm saying like, there's too much tied up in this. If there's no transactions, that's not good for America. You know, America survives oh. by transactions. Or they can do like 50 year mortgages, you know, that'll, that'll help. So I think all the bears don't realize how important this is to the country. And like America kind of figures this shit out. Most importantly, you watch Oppenheimer, you should go see Oppenheimer. I mean, if you ever want to bet against America, I mean, that was the era that, like, I'm saying, it's an interesting history lesson about, you know, we were behind to the Germans. And then again, you know, they went and fucking built a ball. You know? So I think they can figure out how to fix transactions in the, in the uh, real estate market. So, you know, when there's a will, there's a way. And, and that market's just too important. And the industry's setting up in such a way that there's some good, it feels like there's some good news coming. Now, the question is, do they sell the good news or not? And that, I don't know that part. Well, even in a bull market, it's normal to see 10, 50% pullbacks that can shake a lot of people out. So, But I think overall, the Web2 leaders are setting up good. Like they have no competition, even including Robinhood and Coinbase, right? Like you can't go compete against Robinhood and, and people are starting to forgive them, right? Like if you bought Robinhood in the last year, you're now up, right? You don't care what happened in the GameStop era. So if you bought the, the stock in like middle of last year, you now love the product and you're actually up on the stock. So you're like a raw, raw you know, I'm talking if you're June, July, August last year, you're up. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of fresh people in this industry that now have like a positive view on some of these web 2.0 companies, right? Like you like Uber, you like Airbnb, and they're not going anywhere. And you like Robinhood and Coinbase. And, you know, it's just like the, I, I was telling the guys last week, it's just like Chipotle. Remember, they get packed now. Remember their, their food poisoning thing? Yeah, yeah. How long did that take from when the food poisoning hit? Was that? I don't remember. Maybe here somewhere. Yes. No, no, no. It was it was 2021. I think. No, maybe it was those two years. Yeah, it was somewhere here. Right. Guess what? People forget if the product's good. Yeah. People forget now if your product's shit. Right. But Robinhood's a good product. Uber's a good product. Coinbase is a good product. Uh, Airbnb is a fantastic product. Right. Um, a Snapchat's a great product. Uh, so, you know, uh, they're just very heavily, big market caps. I mean, so those are the differences, you know. So they still got a lot of resistance to chew through. All right, buddy. So energy, healthcare, there's some rotation going on. Yeah, definitely rotation and a lot of earnings. I think Microsoft uh, yeah. reporting Apple this week. Obviously, the FOMC. Apple, Apple's not giving an inch, are they? The stock's right there. Apple, calling relatively well. Um, just not giving an inch. Lower mover, but it's just relentless. Microsoft not giving an inch either. Uh, they're, they're pulling back a bit, but just to their 20-day, I mean, yeah. I think it's normal to see even deeper pullback than the 50-day in an uptrend. But so far, definitely among the leaders, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA. Okay, buddy. Everybody have a good week. All right. See you next week.